All right, Shalom, it's old girl in the old family here back with another video that I honestly regret that I even have to do, but this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart, so I'm going to do it. Um, let me start off by saying all praise to the Most High, Ahia, in the name of Yeshia and the Holy Spirit or whatever uh, words you choose to use to acknowledge our Creator, our Redeemer, and the Spirit of the Lord. Um, this video is about all y'all crazy ass women leaving y'all husbands. And yeah, I said it like that on purpose because you're crazy um, or ignorant, lack of knowledge, whichever you want to go with. But that's what this is about. Now, to give you the background or the premise. Um, well, first, let me say this. I'm trying not to edit because editing is something that's tedious and I just don't care for it amongst all my other responsibilities. So I feel like. The only way for me to bring a little more content is to not have to edit. So I'm going to try my best not to edit this, but a little old baby is here. So just forgive me in case I don't edit it and he pop in and out talking, whatever. Y'all understand. But um, let me say this. So the reason I'm making this video is because everybody breaking up. First, the fat boys break up, not say not. But um, celebrities, like I don't know if y'all know Tisha Campbell and Dwayne Martin. Um, like, I mean, just everybody. And that was just like one, but it really broke my heart because they've been married forever. But, um, everybody's breaking up and we listen to some of everybody. And I know y'all probably heard of, um, straight way truth. We have no affiliation. Let me say that again. We have no camp or church affiliation. Um, the most high just hasn't brought us that way. And I ain't even tripping no more about that one. Um, and this is not to say anything negative. I don't know anybody there. You know, I've watched a couple of Pastor Dial's videos where he like in a basement office type of thing. But I, I literally know nothing about these people. However, there's two guys who who are members of theirs and they've been making videos. One of them name is Kabir. And I think he's a former um, NFL person. And then there's another guy. I only seen one of his videos, so I don't even know his name, but it's on YouTube somewhere you can find it. And basically the first guy, Kabir, is all kind of stuff about him and his wife, um, uh, who appears to be a Gentile. And then there's another guy who's making a video talking about another guy's wife leaving. And it's called um, Another Wicked Wife or Another Wicked Ass Wife, something like that, leaving her husband. That's the premise. That's why I'm making this video because... As you all already know, there's an attack on the black family. And that's why I understand why these women leaving their husbands because these are supposed to be Christian women, God-fearing women, but you up and leaving your husband and he ain't, you know, doing the big two or three cheating, beating, and he's not not taking care of you. Outside of that, I don't see what you leave your man for, especially people who've been married seven, eight, or more years. It's like... Come on, y'all got probably multiple kids. Everything is, you know, and you just about to up and leave. It's videos where it's a church helping somebody's wife pack up and leave this big old house. And then the other video is just like a brother, you know, kind of like sad, probably like one of the members, his situation. And he's saying how the wife and the daughter jumped on him. It's just, you know, I don't know these people, but I do watch YouTube. And uh, something came up in my recommended. So that's how I watched it. And me and my husband, we was talking about it. And I'm like, I, I got to say something. I got to say something because it's so crazy. So first and foremost, let me keep it real. Now, I've been married for 14 years as the last month. And let me tell you, I done left my husband so many times. I probably can't even count. Now, let me give you a little background information. I got married when I was 19. And I think my husband had just turned 30. So I got married very young. Okay. And I guess for me, I kind of felt like I grew up with the independent. My parents were cool, but they were never married. My daddy lived over here. My mama lived over here. And we went and saw him on the weekends and stuff like that. He was involved. I'm tight with my dad. But that was my situation. I was never taught to be a wife how to be a wife, none of that type of stuff. So I got married because I felt like it was the right thing to do. And that was pretty much it because because I got pregnant. And so um, we did get married before our son was birthed into the world. But 
I guess I didn't hold marriage in a high regard like the scriptures say about marriage. You know, I didn't see it like that. And I feel like in our communities, it's not as valued and looked upon as the magnificent thing that it is because of um, people trying to save face. And that's one of my points I want to get into. And then I'm going to go back on me. Um, these like reality shows, basketball wives, or just people try to make it seem like, oh, I'm single. I'm living my best life. And it's like, let's keep it real. Women want to be married. Women want to be wife. They want to be chosen, whatever you want to call it. You want to be it. Whether you want to admit it or not, you want to be married. Nobody wants to be a single, single woman. That's looked down upon. I don't care how glamorous they try to make it seem. These side chicks, um, these basketball wives, which they, they not even wives except Doug Christie wife, but they want to be. That's why they be cheating and being other people husband side pieces. They want to be chose. Okay. So just to keep it real, I'm a woman and I'm going to tell you now that I'm older, I'm in my early thirties now. Now that I'm older, I realize how precious it is. My dad actually ran a scenario by me because he's a um he's he has his own business, you know, like construction and um he's a, a licensed contractor. And I went to just kick it with him at one of his houses and he was like, Could you live in this house by yourself if you was a single mother? Because it was kind of like a mansion. And before I even answered it, I was like, Lord forbid. And then I answered it like, hold up. That's not something that I desire. You know, it was a point in time where I was like, whatever. You know, I literally would have thrown my marriage away over nothing. And that's what I want to kind of get to. Over nothing. You know, like I said, I got married when I was 19. And from 19 up until about what, like, let me say maybe like eight years. So late 20s, from 19 to like my late 20s. I would leave my husband just, maybe we got into it. I remember one time I left him because he didn't give me nothing on Mother's Day. Excuse me. Now, don't get me wrong. It was some instances where maybe we needed a little cooling off period. We was both young and high-headed. So, and I was super stubborn. And my husband was a good leader, but he didn't have his temperature and stuff in, um, temper in check. So, we had some issues where I'm like, I feel like I was justified by having that little break that the scriptures talk about. But still, I mean, I'm with him now. And how stupid do we be looking? You leave and you come back. You're trying to pack up your whole house to go stay in somebody's room. Or maybe these churches nowadays, for what I'm seeing, helping setting people up with houses, etc. I don't know how they those churches do it now because I'm not affiliated with a church. But I remember leaving my husband, packing up stuff. Going to stay at my brother's one time. My mom was, and I was the type, I'll leave my husband three, four days. That was it. It wasn't ever no divorce. It wasn't no long gaps. You know what? I take that back. One time I left for a little longer. I actually moved out and did get my own place this time. But a few weeks later, we was back together. So just to let you know, like we never have been divorced. We never been apart for no month or nothing like that. And plus we had two kids. So even if I did leave, we still had to deal. And don't get me started on what it did to my son. Now, my youngest son, he don't know nothing about that stuff. Because by the time he was born, we was more together. And then not too long after he was born, thank the most. High for bringing us to the truth. But my oldest son, he don't say it no more. But up until about mm, two years ago, he used to let us get loud. Y'all ain't going to break up or y'all. I mean, straight traumatized him. I'm tired of y'all breaking up. Y'all always breaking up. Mama over here, daddy over here. Like, it just wreaked havoc on him because we raised him family oriented. So, that's another component. But let me stay on that. You know that you hurting your children. And again, your husband haven't done the big three. Cheating, beating, and not doing what a man's supposed to do as far as providing your needs. The scripture say, and I didn't pull the scripture. I'm basing all of this off one scripture because I know some, this may fall upon people who don't necessarily believe in the Bible and call it what you want. But I, I like to get people who, you know, straddling the fence. Cause if you, if you're not sick, you don't need no physician, not saying it can't help you, but some people like to just hear real talk. 
versus a whole bunch of scriptures, especially if they don't even understand. So I, I literally have one scripture, but I did want to bring up um, the scripture in the New Testament. I didn't pull it, but it says with food, raiment, think and shelter, be content. So you can Google that and you should be able to, to pop it up. I know it's in the New Testament, but as long as your husband give you them big three, needs are met, not wants. Needs, he ain't cheating, he ain't beating. Come on now. Come on. In 2018, you know it's an attack on the black family. So why you throw your husband away? In these two instances, the brothers from Straightway are saying because, well, the, well, the one brother who actually has a ton of videos um, with him actually speaking on his situation, showing you his wife moving while she's like about to pop with their eighth child. It's like crazy. In that situation, they was Christian. And the brother waking up and he wanted to go visit straightway to observe the Sabbath and see how a Sabbath goes. And I guess the wifey was like, I'm done with this Israelite truth mess. And as I said, she appears to be, um, you know, a Gentile, um, appears. And then the other brother, I don't know their status as far as Christianity and all that. I just know that he was saying that the brother was like, you know, we're going to keep the Sabbath, that the child wasn't supposed to play any sports or do anything. And the wife did it anyway. So my biggest beef with all of this is y'all say y'all Christians. Y'all say y'all Bible believers, but you will disrespect and disregard your husband for your pastor. And I'm speaking of the brother Kabir, who a uh, wife secretly recorded him and he was, um, you know, he got a hold to the footage and her like talking to different people, like them helping her leave her husband. Um, you know, and I just find that crazy. Like, so your pastor is telling you your husband is wrong. You need to leave him. But your husband coming out the Bible, like pastor or husband. Remember, he ain't cheating. He ain't beaten. And all of your needs are met. You and the children, whether they're all his or you got a, um, I forget what they call it, but the, you know, like if you got stepkids or whatever, he's taking care of everybody, everything. He's not cheating. He's not beating. But your beef is he want to live according to the Holy Manuscript. And it's probably a, a change, less um, stuff you can do. Because in Christianity, obviously, they real loosey-goosey with it. You can kind of partake in all kind of paganism and with Christianity and still say you believe. And I think it will watch the videos for yourself and gather your own conclusion on what that was. But a lot of it boils down to, for example, when I came into the truth, I've always liked dresses and skirts because I grew up in Christianity. Um, but when we came into the truth... My husband like, yeah, the Bible clearly say this. You need to be wearing skirts and dresses. Um, let's just say that I was one of the ones like, well, at my church that I was going to at the time that I got the truth, you could wear pants and it wasn't no problem. But my husband like, no, nah, you can't be wearing pants. Let, let me not say it like that. My husband does allow me to wear pants, but it's kind of one of them 90, 10 type of things. 90% um, skirts and dresses, which is again, fine by me because that's how I was raised. But let's just say it wasn't. And this is just to kind of give you an example of what's going on with a lot of women. They'll take that and say, well, I ain't got to do that. Go to their pastor. Pastor tell them, no, you ain't got to do that. And so now you usurping authority over your husband because your husband said, put on that skirt and dress. Screw what your pastor say because your husband's not telling you nothing wrong. And that's my biggest beef with these women. Your husband ain't telling you nothing wrong. He ain't even demeaning you like, you know, them hardcore he rules like, shut the hell up, woman. He ain't even on that tip. The brother was so kind and so patient talking to his wife. You would have thought he was the one recording it because he was being so soft spoken, so patient, but... She was the one. And like he said, imagine how she talked to me when she ain't recording. And oh my gosh, me as a woman, I was cringing like, Oof, this is how she talking to her man? But anyway, you know, what would you expect from a heathen? Well, excuse me, I can't confirm she is, but the way she looked. Um, And let me touch on that real quick. I thought they were supposed to be more quiet. I thought they ain't have all that mouth for attitude. That's why our brothers go over there to them. Mm -mm. Maybe back in the day, but not now. Y'all should hear the way this woman was talking to her husband. 
And all I could think is, but y'all say that's black women and we unruly. We don't know when to shut up. We, we, uh, messy. We don't know how to, uh, show our husbands the respect and authority. Watch that video on her. Better not none of y'all brothers speak on black women no more. Cause that's just one example. Remember she was recording it. And she was trying to be a little more milder, you could tell, because she even apologized to him. And he said, your name, Miss Sorry. I guess she always just say sorry. And that's Christianity for you. You can say sorry, but still doing the behavior. And this is all what he's telling her in the video on YouTube for your viewing pleasure. Okay. So I just want to speak on that real quick. Like, I thought they was more um, submissive and subservient. Hmm. So that stereotype is out the window. And I was so happy at that fact, not at the brother's situation, but you know, again, you made your bed, you got to sleep in it when you're dealing with these nations, when you're dealing with whoever, you know, I don't know his decision and why he married her and exactly her ethnicity, but just looking at her, she definitely ain't no woolly hair sister, you know, anyway, so moving on, that's the premise for this video. You leave it your man, obviously there's an attack on a black family and it's like y'all just giving into it. For what? Because in their case, they had seven kids and she was pregnant with the eighth. You're leaving your man, which he verbalized that he's a a pro football player or maybe retired. I, I don't know crap about football, so forgive me. But he mentions this himself. You know, he, he wanted it to be known. So he said it. He showed their house and she was moving out. So this is public information. Um. You know, but again, that was his choosing on, you know, choosing her. But I just find it very interesting that the, this particular woman was a Christian and the way she was conducting herself. I'm like, what kind of Christian is that? But anyway, I think one of the big problems with all women, obviously not just sisters, you don't want nobody telling you what to do, especially your man, which I find that kind of interesting because, well, in her case, he said she never had to work. So she's a housewife, which I'm going to get on that in a minute. Well, let me just go. Let me just flow. You a housewife and you leaving your man. And I ain't trying to be funny because I, when I was leaving my husband, I had a job. So I felt like I'm good. Not that I was, that was just the mentality, but you a housewife and you leaving your man. Like you ain't even got no finances. Who in your ear? Since when do that make sense? But anyway, you know, a lot of us work. You have people telling you what to do. For example, I just started a new job and the, um, the people that are training me are of another, um, uh, ethnicity. And sometimes it could be kind of different dealing with people that are of, of other races because of, you know, how we talk culture, the way we take things, etc. And, but I, I haven't, I'm not new to the profession. So anyway, the person corrected me. And I took offense at first because the person's like, well, you didn't do X, Y, Z. And I'm like, yeah, it's in the computer. And they're like, no, I look, you didn't do this. I, I, I missed some stuff. You know, I haven't been there two months. And the first instinct was offense. But then I thought about it later. Well, it is their job to get me up to par. And I was missing some stuff. Let me not be offended and soak in this information so I can learn and grow and be even more a beast at my job versus taking offense and acting like, can't nobody tell me nothing because... No one knows everything. Okay, so that's just a smaller example. You know, if I got to listen to a man or a woman at my job who may be a subordinate or who may be in a position of authority over me either way, because again, when you're somewhere new, I mean, even people who are, um, who maybe you would consider um, subservient or beneath you um, position, like maybe you a manager, but someone who's just a, uh, um, a regular staff person may say something and it's like you're over them because you're a manager, but they've been there 15 years. So they just know some stuff that you ain't going to find in the books. But if you got a big head and you can't be told anything, you're going to miss out on that info just because they beneath me, you know, um, my position is I have a higher authority. So, you know, I don't really get that, but it happens. I'm telling you, it just happened to me like two weeks ago. My first instinct was offense. And then I had to think about it a lot. Well, shoot, you, you didn't. I looked in the computer. She was right. And she trying to help me. So let me not be offended. That's ridiculous. Get out of here, devil. But um, women who don't want to listen to their husbands, you know, and I know some more women, but I want to, you know, speak wisely because I don't want to be putting nobody's business out there, but who just flat out like, I'm not going to submit to you. I ain't doing that. Excuse me. And 
and they Christians. You know, I don't understand it. Now, I do understand that sometimes, you know, men are rougher. Sometimes my husband talks to me a little rough. Sometimes he ain't got time to be tender and delicate. Maybe he holding something heavy or doing something strenuous. And you know, sometimes a person say stuff and maybe your feelings can't always be catered to. But that's where communication comes in at. You know, you can always talk about stuff. I just feel like to trip out on your husband because he's trying to tell you something good, beneficial, but you don't want to listen to him because you feel like, excuse me, he's not in an authority position over you is retarded, especially if you're a Christian. Now, now let me say this again. I'm talking about people who say they Christians, meaning you living by this. I don't know. Um, Let me just move on. The church is up in your business. Now, I'm going to tell you like this. I grew up in church, you know, from about eight or nine to 29. I've seen it all. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb and say most people in your church do not give a damn about you. Um, most people in your church want to know your business, but not in the sense of want to pray and tarry and fast for you. They just want to know your business for something to talk about and gossip about. Um, a lot of people in these churches, churches are gluttonous. Um, they, um, feel like they're superior to us Hebrews because, um, they feel like we're too harsh or like someone mentioned about my husband using, um, curse words or whatever. And I'm just like, well, what scriptures say that that's a sin? Furthermore, which sin is greater? Furthermore, you a glutton. I can look at you and tell, but that's nothing because my husband was cussing. Not reading the Bible and cussing, but talking, cussing, because he's passionate, and then reading a scripture. And I was just thinking, like, you can't even, you have no self-control, no willpower. But you look down on my husband because he cursed him? Yeah. Okay. That ain't what it is. My husband, the spirit that's on him is, is making your spirit feel convicted because all you do is follow the church and the pastor. You don't even know scripture for yourself. And if you think for one second your pastor is perfect and what you see on that pulpit for two hours, even if it's been over a 10 year period, you don't know nobody till you live with them. I'm going to say that again. You don't know nobody till you live with them in close quarters. Then you realize who people really are, what they really about. So if my husband cursed, he ain't ish, but you don't know what your pastor be doing. You don't, you don't live there, but whatever. But I want to again say this. I remember one time I was uh, pregnant and I went to the altar to go pray. And there was an elder mother who came up to me and was like, oh my gosh. Cause I had had some issues, um, with, um, a pregnancy and um she was like basically like I'm happy to see that you're pregnant again and I just want to love on you and if you ever want to talk need an ear etc now like I said I grew up in the church so a lot of times I would tell my mom kind of like every any and everything um my interactions with church members and I told my mom about it she told me don't do that she like to talk be careful with that and then there was another brother this is when I started to wake up and I was kicking it with him because he's the elder. And I was telling him about church back in the day. It's different. Church in the 90s is way different than what church is now. You know, I've been in church since the early 90s. So I've seen how different it is. And um, I was kicking it with this brother about like, yeah, we don't do this no more. We don't do that. And I feel like in my spirit, I need to be doing this, etc. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to get back out there on the streets when the weather's appropriate. And my mom saw me talking to him. And she hit me up later like, be careful what you say to him because he messy. He had just told someone else in the church's business. Someone else confided in them about their son battling with homosexuality. And he blasted it that he blasted that information, an elder. So my point in telling you these two scenarios is that people in my church that I grew up in was trying to. Well, the first woman came to me to confide the brother. I just kind of thought I could talk to him because he had a real rough street past and I thought he was like a more realer person than a lot of the fake and phony people that's in churches so I approached him and on both occasions my mother let me know don't tell them your business because they talk so but that's common sense everybody in your church <laughs> is not for your turn these people telling you to leave your man are you serious leave my man 
who's taking care of me. We've been married, just saying if it was me. I've been married 14 years, two boys later. And I'm about to leave my husband because he required that I don't wear earrings or makeup or I don't know. Because some of y'all husbands may be very strict. You can't arch your eyebrows. You got to cover your head 24-7. I don't know. Whatever you may feel like is extreme. Just because he say that, that don't mean in your pastor's you go to your pastor and they like, oh, you ain't got to do that. You covered by the blood of Jesus. Just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. You good. No, because the, your man, your husband is the head. Let me go on and, um, where I want to, I want to just leave my one scripture. I'm going to read my one, one scripture. Um, y'all non-believers don't leave a out here. It's just one scripture. Then we'll get back to it. But I do want to read this scripture because I feel like, um, this kind of like sums it up and says it all, if you ask me. But anyway, this is 1 Corinthians 7 and 10. Um, the message to the church of Corinth. And the chapter 7, if you got a Bible like man, you know how they give you the headers. You know, where it tell you what it's about and it say marriage. So, obviously. Um, but verse 10. And unto the married, I command, yet not I, but the Lord. I mean, that says it, but I'm going to repeat it again. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Now, um, oh, well, you know what? Let me just go on and do 11. But, and if she depart. Let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let not the husband put away his wife. So if you do decide to leave your man or like I said, it was some situations that happened to me. I've been married for a long time where I felt like, okay, my husband tripping or maybe I did something and then he did something worse to like show me or whatever where I left for a minute. But you supposed to be reconciled. Y'all straight up leaving y'all husbands getting divorced. I mean, if T.I. and Tiny can figure it out, we can't. Because we supposed to be believers. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad to see that they stuck together. I was not trying to be sarcastic. Because it hurts my heart to hear about people breaking up. Because I remember when I was going through it. People in my business. My daddy know. My brothers know. My mother-in-law know. And then let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something. This went on for I told you like eight eight to nine years of me leaving my husband, you know, back and forth. And one day my husband said to me that I leave him so much that he don't trust me in the sense of he don't know if I'm going to be with him or not. And it really broke my heart. And that's what I don't understand about y'all Christian women. Y'all ain't even got no conscience. Y'all conscience been seared with a hot iron. Because my husband told me, it's like, he don't know one day I'm on the team, the next day I'm not. He don't know if I'm going to be here. I'm here one day, I could be gone the next. He don't even know. I, I made him develop an insecurity. He didn't know if I was going to be there because I leave all the time. And then eventually it just to be kind of comical, it got to the point where he like, you leaving again? All right, you always leave it. Heck, go. You know, and then I got tired. Packing up my stuff, unpacking, leaving stuff, going over people's house, being on somebody's couch. They in your business slash know you got a check and want you to, you know, they looking at that money. But in all seriousness, it broke my heart because, and this video may be a minute because I'm taking my time. It broke my heart for my husband to tell me that, like, how would you feel if you knew I was here, we was a team, I had your back, but at any minute, if I do something you don't like, you out. And me, as a, what they would call backslider at this time, I had compassion. It hurt me. And it made me put myself in his shoes. Like, I don't, I don't like that. I wouldn't like that feeling. I don't want him to feel like that. That's what I don't understand about so-called Christian women. Or... Are you not a real follower of Christ? You just one of them chicks who like to go to church, get cute, get dressed. Because you're a housewife, you don't really go nowhere, no way. You don't know how to drive. You ain't really got no social life. So church is an outlet for you. It's just something to do. Because that's the conclusion I've drawn on a lot of Christian women. Like, excuse me, how on earth can y'all do some of the stuff y'all do? Everything from jumping on y'all husbands and everything. Like physically putting hands on your man. 
but you say you're a Christian. Like, I don't understand that. But, and I think you phone in full of crap, but you know, you got to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So I'm not trying to say that you don't believe a God, but your action showed, like, listen to what I said. My husband flat out, like, you just got me kind of like out here. I don't know if you're going to be here one minute, the next minute, maybe something go by. And, and that Mother's Day, when I told y'all about that, get a little deeper into these holidays, what they do, how they have people so in their feelings and so riled up. I thank the Heavenly Father we so done with that. Because at the end of the day, all praise to the Most High. If I want something or my husband wants something, when that check is there, when that free money is there, we just do it. Because we done been there, done that. Me get mad, telling him to go buy me something. He come buy me some crap where I'm like, ain't no way in the world I'm going to use that. Me trying to go get him stuff, surprising him with a video game, the dang on 2K, whatever year that was, when the next one was coming out the very next day. Which obviously he ain't trip about it, but I told you not to talk. If you want to talk, leave out of here. I told you I'm making a video. Be quiet. Sorry. So um, I may or may not edit that. But um, so those are just examples of how you want to press your mate to do something, surprise me, be spontaneous. But let's keep it real. Uh, that saying, um, it ain't a, it ain't about the gift, it's the thought. Okay, I'm going to keep it real. I like nice bags. If if I want a, a bag, well, let me say this. I like certain kind of bags. They may not be nice to you, but the bags that I like, you know, a couple hundred. And I told my husband he could go to a consignment shop and get a used one. It'd still be nice quality, a little cheaper. Well, he went to a secondhand store and bought me some coach purses from the 1950s and not nice vintage, Okay. And I ain't like them. Never worn. They end up going to the trash. And that's just an example of instead of me pressing him to get me that for Mother's Day, why not? You got the money. Let's go to the stove and get this together. Not that because like I said, I, I didn't even like it. And the same thing with the 2K. It came out. I think it might have been 2004, 2014 or 15. And I went to surprise him and bought it in the, the very next year was coming out the next day. You know, so that's just a little more insight to why we do things the way we do. If someone wants something, they say it and then they get it. Or let's say I tell my husband, I want him to buy it. Okay, he give me the money or I maybe like take me to the mall so I can get this item. And that way I get what I want. You know, I just think that works for us. But we don't even do holidays no more anyways. But I'm just, just an example um, of what's happened to us in the past. So, you know, I just really don't get people letting churches be up in their business because from my experience with the one church that I've been a member of for, you know, for 20 years, um, people ain't really for your turn. They don't really care about you, you know, for the higher ups is what you can give and what you can do. And for the everyday people, you know, it's just a, um, competitive, you don't fit in with us, you know, what kind of, um, what kind of car are you driving? What's your profession? You know, it clicks. That's what that is. So I don't understand how you're going to listen to your pastor over your man because we just read what the scriptures say. You're not supposed to depart. So I don't really understand that like y'all tripping. And furthermore, do you know how many women, good women, um, will be, jeez, hold on. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Um, phone call came through but um where was i at oh listening to your pastor listening to people in the church over your husband like i just find that to be one of the craziest things ever especially if your husband is not doing the what i call the big three cheating beating and not providing the needs of the family that's just crazy to me but y'all out here doing it like it's nothing oh that's what i was saying and then you got plenty single women who would love to 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 cook for your husband, clean for him, wash his clothes, all of that stuff. Half of y'all don't even want to have sex with y'all husbands no more. It's just crazy. Like, you know how many women it is who would love to have your husband. And here he is trying to hold on to your little dead weight, uh, walking dead zombie self, you know. And I guess I can't knock a brother for wanting to try to make it work with his wife. Like in their case, they got seven, eight kids, you know, it's understandable. But I just think that. Sometimes we have people in our ear that's not good for us, whether it's pastors, first ladies, elders, your mama, your grandma, your auntie, because a real one going to tell you, you better go back to your husband. I remember the last time I left my husband, a friend told me, um, 
that I had already got my apartment and moved in. I remember uh, I was ordering beds because was, the next day I was going to go buy beds for me and my, my kids. I just had my second son. Just had him and left my husband. I know. Um, and uh, quiet. I'm not going to tell you again. Um, and she was saying basically like this, the life she had left her man, divorced him. And she was with her little boyfriend and she was basically like this, the life. I don't know about you, but this feel right to me. And instantly my spirit was like, this don't feel right to you. And it didn't, but she said, but you know, just make your decision wisely because I can't hold you at night. You know, I can't be there with you at night and do what he do. And y'all need to think about that. The people who tell you to leave your husband, is they going to be there when you get them flat tires? Is they going to be there if a mouse get in the house? Is they going to be there to change oils? Is they going to be there to take your kids to go run and get a last minute project, some tape or some glue sticks for school? You know, are they really going to be there? Are they going to be there to sit there and listen to you run off at the mouth? Because, you know, women talk a lot. Us women, myself included. Um, but I am trying to work on that. Um all praise to the most high. They really got y'all gassed up. Meanwhile, y'all just don't know they want you in the lonely heifer club. Or maybe in that person's case, maybe they feel like, you know, because he put this out there that she done talk to money people in. You know, maybe they feel like we about to take this nigga, you know, and get this nigga money. I don't know. But he watches videos. Um, but anyway, um, and then let me go back to y'all housewives. You a housewife and you leave me, man. Like, for real, you ain't even got no money. Where you going to go? What you going to do? Oh, you think you still going to have that car and be spending and doing? He still, because he still got to pay for his kids and all that. You know, he could be honorary too. You know, he could shut that car down too. And then some of y'all have been housewives for so long, you don't even have a skill. You don't have a trade. You don't have a degree. You don't even have anything. So if you go out in the workforce, you starting from zero and that money that you're making and you're going to have to listen to somebody. Ain't going to be worth it. And then soon you'll find yourself wishing you was back at home. Anyway, I just wanted to speak on this, y'all, because it's wrong. It's evil. A lot of y'all got that Jezebel spirit on y'all. I know because I've been there. I ain't finna listen to my husband. Ain't nobody listening to their husbands. Ain't nobody even married, blah, blah, blah. I think I am. My mom. Oh, no, I take that back. My mom and one of her sisters is married. But it was a point in time where I was the only one in my family married. Oh, I, I forgot about my grandmother. Sorry. Hold up. Hold up. Slow down. My grandma always been married, had always been married. And then me. And then my mom got married, but I had already been married for almost 10 years, probably before my mom got married. And one of my aunts probably got married maybe around the same, something like that. So I didn't have nobody, you know, everybody looked at my husband's flaws because he did this in the past or that. You need to leave him. But I have flaws too. Had and have. Present tense. And a lot of you women do too. You know, and it ain't on me to tell you what your flaws are. It's for you to go before the Lord and admit it. You have to confess. You have to confess your faults. Tell your husband why you so mean to him. Why you so evil to him. What happened? Maybe something happened in your past. An uncle touched you something, you know, and you bitter. Maybe you felt like he ain't that knight in shining armor. I know it took me a long time to get away from what I thought my husband was supposed to be. What society say. What other people like to stunt about on Facebook with they mans. Like when, excuse me, that ain't even really the case. And I had to just learn to accept my husband for who he is. Like, I know he gonna leave stuff in the bed. I know he a little messy, you know. And I'm going to have to clean up after him and stuff. I know he a little more rough and rugged, but that's fine because I have flaws too. I got all kind of childhood baggage, you know, all kinds of things. A lot of times, and especially more in the past, I talk too much, you know. So it's a lot of things that my husband have to deal with with me too. I'm not perfect. You know, I get frustrated. Um, like I lose stuff. I get frustrated looking for things. Um, if I get too uncomfortable, too, like too hot, I get frustrated irritable cranky you know he got to deal with that so i got to deal with his stuff you know so i think that's one of the biggest parts with a lot of women we like to think we perfect and we don't admit like how many people if you just think about it keep it real or even you how how many times have you admitted a flaw have you ever admitted fault have you it's something to think about because y'all looking dumb as hell out here just leaving y'all husbands like you look stupid and you got your man looking like a punk because it appears as if he not ruling his house because of you 
where he's just trying to tell you, look, the spirit of the Lord is on me. And I feel like we need to follow this Bible and we need to keep these commandments. And you just got an evil spirit on you. You need to pray and fast. Why you don't want to live according to the Bible that your husband is presenting and why you want to hold on to what your pastor say you can do. Where is it that you're supposed to be following a pastor over your husband? Where, where, what scriptures say that, that the pastor, um, authority and weight is higher than your husband. No, your husband is especially a righteous man. Because again, if you're a Christian woman and your husband bringing you the scriptures, you, to me, you should be looking at your pastor. Like, like I know that's what happened with me. My husband got the truth first. You know, it was all in the same day. He got the truth via a video. And when I came home from work, he like, you got to watch this. And I watched it and you know, this life ain't never been the same since all praises, but I didn't question my husband. I questioned things that I've been taught that I had been told that was lies. And I prayed to the Lord for truth. And then I had to get in the scripts and be like, you know what? They've been lying to me. I'm not finna let my pastor like the church. Okay. So let me say, for example, the church I was going to, they worship on Sunday, like most of them. But my husband, even before the truth, used to be like the Sabbath is the Lord's day. But like a Christian, I used to blow him off. Well, it don't matter. We do it on Sunday. But I was asleep. Once I became woke, I realized, no, that is significant. And we need to do that. But I didn't get mad at my husband or flip on him. I did the right thing. I got mad at the false doctrine and lies and the ignorance. And myself, a lot of that responsibility was on me, not just on the church I was attending because the Bible clearly says study to show thyself approved. So when I start studying, I started to see, okay, this stuff that they telling us is not the truth. The stuff that my husband told me was the truth. And let me start reading the Bible for myself. If your husband come on you with something that you think is crazy or contrary to what your pastor said, then all you got to do is verify it. That's it. And then you'll know who's lying and who ain't. So I don't know what's wrong with y'all, but ain't no man coming above my husband. I mean, I, I love my father and I love my two brothers and my two boys, but my husband is the number one man, you know? So I, I don't understand that. And um, while I got this, I want to say, if you don't have this, you may want to get this. And if you're a man battling with your husband, um, excuse me, oof. if you're a man battling with your wife, the book of Enoch, um, well, if she a Christian, she may not even entertain this. But as a lot of y'all know, Enoch get into um, the spiritual aspects. It tells you more about the spirit realm. He spent a lot of time in the spirit realm and dealing with the fallen ones. So this gets into, um, you know, the spiritual realm and, and how it affected the earth. Um mankind women things like that so i think this is a very good read um what other points that i want to hit um i think i'm done i think that's it obviously my premises stay together quit leaving y'all husbands over dumb stuff you look stupid as hell your dumb behind sitting up here leaving your man for nothing dogging him out just because he wants you to live according to the bible but you a christian woman so you shouldn't have no problem with it and that's one of the biggest hypocrisies i find in christianity i hate that religion with a passion i hate it just like i hate the other ones like just as much i'm not giving christianity no pass because i was caught up in it i hate it just like islam i hate it just like jehovah witnesses because there's so many lies up in there they just tell you so many lies and it's like if your spouse ain't conforming to what we say then they ain't right but y'all ain't even coming out the bible that's man-made stuff including christianity today's christianity you know after the greeks and romans done infiltrated it so i just feel like if you really believe the bible let's take the label christian out if you really believe the bible and someone a woman a man your daughter like it's, it's people who I know who won't listen to me because I'm reading out the Bible and it's contrary to what the pastor say, but they say they Christians. I don't understand that. That don't make no sense. You look stupid, but in their mind, we stupid. We off. We in a cult or whatever, but I don't care. I'm a ride or die for this word and I'm not going to switch it up for no Christian, for whoever don't like it. I'm not going to switch it up because as much as y'all want to look down on us because Hebrews may cuss or whatever, you know what? Your pastors and them cuss. It's plenty of videos on pastors slipping up cussing. Your pastors them not perfect. They haven't reached the mark. Neither are you. 
Let somebody take you there. You might mess around and cuss and it ain't been 10 years. Let something happen to you. You might mess around and, and, and get tempted, have an urge to smoke a cigarette and you ain't smoked it in years. Stop it. Y'all need to stop this. Y'all Christians sitting up like y'all better than somebody running around with the white man weave all up in your head. Blonde hair, blue eyes, glutton, three, four hundred pounds. But you're going to knock my husband because he cussed. Look at you. It's obviously you dealing with one of the seven deadly sins. But anyway, don't leave your man over nothing foolish. Because if you mess around and let the devil and people get in your ear and you file that divorce, he on to the next. And I'm telling you. It's some women out here who would love your man, take care of your kids, they step kids like they was their own, and then he'll get to the point where he disgusted by you and ain't even going to want you no more. You ain't even going to be able to use that to get him back. So if I was you, I would get in the Bible because you're a Christian, so you believe in it, so you say, and read the Bible for yourself and seek out the truth for yourself and let the Most High and His Holy Spirit teach you and guide you in all things. Again, we got to pray for our families because the devil's trying to rip them apart or trying to get us to do a lot of that interracial stuff that the Bible clearly say. Don't give your sons to their daughters and don't take their daughters for your sons. So I'm not being racist, but if it come across, uh, excuse me, if it comes across racist, then you blame the good book because it clearly say that we ain't supposed to be mixing to put it in modern day terms. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end here. I just want to say shalom. Let's pray for the back black family. And let me say this. If you have a woman who will not hear the Bible, let her read the Willie Lynch letter. That's a non-biblical text source that she can read or he can read to see why the black family is in the state that it's in and why the roles are turned upside down. And I don't care. I know some people say that that letter is invalid. He didn't really do it, blah, blah, blah. Read it. It's still truth in there. It's, it's basically this as far as the role reversals. So that's something else, like I said, when I first started, because a lot of people don't want to hear the Bible. Y'all know, I just want to hear you talk. Y'all know them people, but they still lost. We still got to try to reach them. So reach them where you can have them read the Willie Lynch letter and let them see why we're in the state that we're in. And what's going on with Judah and the 12 tribes in, in the black community. Shalom. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Let's take care of ourselves and each other, Israel. We almost there. Not too much longer, Zion. Be blessed.